Sure. Okay. Well, currently at the Hawaiian Culture Center, we have our Le Aloha Oka Ohana project, um, and that is introducing um, Native Hawaiian traditional values to our Native Hawaiian people. And for some, we have to say introduced because a lot of us have been born and raised on the mainland or off Kapai Aina. And so because of that, it's a reconnecting tool for a lot of us in the community. interesting I had to come to Utah to be able to learn more about my Hawaiian culture. Um, I think one of the most important values I learned is uh, about our family and about Ohana. And I think it's brought our family uh, closer together. We have an opportunity to uh, go to Hawaii uh, several times a year and my wife and my daughter and I gave our genealogy to my in-laws and uh, they were pretty surprised and so it's something neat that I'll always cherish being able to recognize my ancestors and being able to uh, do it in Hawaiian. Through the program, I'm able to learn the importance of uh, those that have come before me. And so being able to represent that and to express that to my family in Hawaiian is something that's special, uh, something that I was never raised to learn how to do. So it's kind of neat having come here to Salt Lake City to be able to learn how to uh, to do that. Even though I'm Polynesian, I was raised mostly in the United States, you know, outside of the Polynesian area. This was a, a chance for my husband and I to learn culture together, and I just, we love it. And, you know, they make it so easy for us to come. And, and it's something that my husband and I can share. I really love the Ho'oponopono, where you get together as a family unit and you talk over something that is, you know, maybe causing dis dissension, uh, causing problems, where you're going to work through it. So conflict resolution. And the way it's done, it's a really beautiful way of taking care of problems that, you know, as a teacher, we have classes in conflict resolution. and. And it's what the Hawaiians were doing all along. So I feel like I can talk to my husband about things that maybe before I, I wouldn't know what to say, but I understand his culture much more and I understand how much it means to him. And uh, in our vocabulary, one of the most wonderful things, I think, is that it's part of our everyday language now. In our lessons, we really talked about how aloha is more than just love. It's um, showing respect and how mahalo is more than just saying thank you. Because when you say thanks, it can kind of go both ways. Um, or you can just kind of seem insignificant just by saying thank you. And we talked about how, I wrote down here, the mahalo is to respect, um, to praise, and to hold something or someone in, a, in, in esteem um, by, by showing that respect and that love for somebody um, goes beyond saying thank you. Um, it's having actions and being willing to show that thanks is, um, I think, way more important. And it's something that I learned, or it came closer to my, my heart and, and I think about it a lot at home, um, not just saying thanks when she does the dishes or stuff, but like actually showing my thanks and doing things for her and to help her um, to show my thanks. And that's something that really, I really thought a lot about. And I really liked that lesson too, um, because we shared the significance of aloha. You know, we say aloha as in like, Hey, aloha. You know, like, hello and goodbye or love. I mean, that's the easiest way to explain to somebody who's never heard of aloha before. Like, that's just simply what aloha is. But um, during our classes, we learned that aloha wasn't really said as a, as a commonality, not like, hey. It was like a very spiritual um, experience because at the time, there weren't a lot of Hawaiians left and when you would see somebody you would share aloha you would share ha um, 
you know, to to recognize each other and to I don't know, it just seems it seems more of a sacred word. So whenever I say Allah, it, it carries way, way more weight and meaning than it ever did before. Exactly. And and it's just like the Allah spirit. It's you can't explain it. You can't explain what that Allah spirit really feels like. You just have to experience and sharing that sacredness with other people. So I really love that. And I think Mahalo and Aloha has definitely carried a stronger weight with both of us in our in our homes. For us, wisdom and knowledge kind of go hand in hand, but um, knowledge is a, something to where it needs to be passed on. So knowledge is something that's living. Um, it's not something that we consider an abstract. Um, for something to be um, considered knowledge for us as Native Hawaiians, it has to have worth. It has to have an outlet. What I learned this week, when I learned about canoes and prowls this week, it made me feel like I was more Hawaiian. Yeah. Mm. Because I want to be more like my mom because she was raised in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Do you feel more confident when, you're, when you feel like you're Hawaiian? Mm, yeah. Everything that we need to know is already in our na'au. All we do through the Lealoha Project is help them to remember to reconnect and to tap into that viva into our na'al. Um, and so by providing those services or those sessions, um, we've noticed that it's allowed a lot of our Native Hawaiian people to feel very more comfortable um, in, their, in the Western world. Yeah, to provide them, we're giving them, we're trying to provide um, that foundation. And that way, as our kupuna tell us, if you planted like Kalo, which is our elder sibling Haloa, um, you can bend. The wind push you one way, you can sway, but you never break.